All right, hi everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Thomas and I'm going to be talking today about uh, how I learned to protect my lungs from the air in Beijing. A little bit about myself uh, before I begin. I first need to say that I'm not an expert in air pollution. Instead, I have a PhD in social psychology. Uh, and I'm currently a professor at the University of Chicago. Um, and I do cultural psychology. But my story today begins when I was a Fulbright scholar living in Beijing in 2012 and 2013. So I was there doing my research uh, in China when the air apocalypse struck. And at this point, I started to get really worried about what the air was doing to my health. Now, how bad is the air in Beijing? What does it really do to our health? Well, let me tell you about a little study that was done in the city of Boston, uh, in the country where I'm from. Now, what they did is among elderly people, they tracked rates of PM2.5 in Boston and rates of heart attacks on different days. And what they found is that on days where PM2.5 went up, heart attack rates also went up. Now, this is pretty scary, right? But this is talking about the city of Boston. What about Beijing? Well, let's take a look back at that map that I, or the, the graph that I just showed you. Now, if you look at the, at the y-axis on this, it tops out at 50 micrograms. Now, how big do we have to make this y-axis to accommodate the average in Beijing? I'm not talking about the maximum. We're talking about the maximum here in Boston. But let's just go with the average in Beijing. This is what we have to do to this graph to accommodate the average in Beijing. So, who knows what, what sort of health effects would be measured if we did this study in Beijing instead. So this got me to wondering, do air purifiers work? Can air purifiers help me protect my health? Now, what I was particularly concerned about was particles that are very small. So I saw lots of studies that talked about pollen particles. These are the sizes of different particles. You can see that the pollen particles tend to be about 10 to 100 microns. But when I'm living in China, I'm not concerned about those large particles. I'm concerned about the smaller particles of industrial air pollution. We often talk about particles 2.5 microns and below. Now, it was at this point that I saw the test of a doctor living in Beijing. His name is Richard St. Cyr. And his tests were important because he used a laser particle counter. Now, that's important because those particle counters can test down to very small particles, the ones that can penetrate deep into our lungs and even enter our bloodstream. Now, he did a very, very simple test in his home in Beijing. He would measure the amount of particles in the air in his home, he would turn on a purifier, and then measure the particles again. Very simple test. The test showed that the particles went down, and he did lots of these tests. The answers were very clear. Part particulate went down in his home after using these purifiers. And so I went from being really concerned, really nervous, to incredibly happy. Great, I'll just go out and I'll just buy one of those machines. Problem solved. I can continue living in Beijing. And then I found out the machine that he tested, one of the machines that he tested, cost 14,000 RMB. But really multiply that by two because you need one for the living room, one for the bedroom, you add in replacement filters, and soon I'd be spending about 4,000 US dollars just to breathe clean air in my home. So that got me to the question, why is it so expensive? Or if you put it another way, what's in that magic box that costs $1,000? Well, I've opened up that magic box, and here's what's inside. The air comes down from the bottom. It goes through a, a coarse pre-filter. There's a fan in the middle that pushes it up through a HEPA filter. Now, this HEPA filter is the workhorse of an air purifier. But what is a HEPA filter? Well, a HEPA filter is made from synthetic fibers, just like the shirt that I'm wearing today. It's important because they get over 99% of particles above and below 0.3 microns. Now, this includes things like PM2.5, mold, bacteria, viruses. If it's a particle in the air, the HEPA filter will capture it. So if we have one of those HEPA filters, we can reduce this particulate pollution in our home. Now, are those HEPA filters some sort of super expensive, super fancy new technology? Well, it turns out they were invented in the 1940s during the US Manhattan Project. They, they were concerned about radioactive particles in the air from developing the atomic bomb, and so they developed HEPA filters as a part of that. What that means is that this is not one company's patent. This is a mature technology that's been around for 70 years, right? So this got me to thinking, wait a second, if that's just a fan and a HEPA filter, well, I've got a fan at home, and this being China, I just reached out to one of the many HEPA manufacturers that exist here. I bought a HEPA, man, uh, a HEPA filter on top of, and I thought, well, fan plus filter equals this. This is the very first DIY purifier that I made in my apartment in Beijing. 
Now, after I set it up, I did a very simple experiment. I would put this near my bed every night when I went to sleep, and I would turn it on. And every week, I would take a picture of the filter. Now, when I started, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, when I started, the filter looked like this, and after five weeks, the filter looked like this. But now, this is not outdoor air. This is the air in my bedroom next to my face, right? Now, next, I got more into this, because just seeing a dirty filter means it's capturing something. But how do we know that it's capturing the really small particles? So I went out and I bought a laser particle counter. At this point, my friends made fun of me because they said, you're spending all this money on uh, testing equipment, you're not buying uh, air purifiers, guilty as charged. But when I got this, I did two types of tests. The first type of test that I did is I wanted to know, is the air that's coming out of this filter clean? So I've got an example of one of these DIY filters here, and I brought with me a laser particle counter. Now this particle counter uses a fan in the back and a laser in the middle to test for two different sizes of particles. On the right here, we have particles 2.5 microns and above, and on the left, we have the number of particles 0.5 microns and above. Now HEPA filters are rated to get over 99% of particles, 0.3 microns and above. This number right here is at about, on the smaller part, it was about 28,000 right now. It's not good, okay? But if we're gonna get over 99% of these particles, we should see this drop down to about 280, okay? That would be 99%. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on the fan. And we can see this number on the left drop from about 28,000. Right now it's at 94, 38. Those 2.5 micron particles are already down to zero, right? So we can see that this is getting over 99% of the very small particles that are in our air. So at this point, I was pretty happy. I said, all right, well, the air that's coming out of it is clean, but there we go. But is that enough to really clean the air in the entire room? So for this, I did a super scientific, sophisticated test where I put the DIY next to my bed, I put the particle counter this time across the room. So now it's testing the general room air, not the air that's coming directly out of the machine. Now here's what happened to those larger 2.5 micron particles. This is about one hour. You can see those particles start to drop, or start to drop immediately. Next, I ran another test around eight hours, and this is what I found. What you can see is those particles continue to drop over the course of eight hours. Now, this was a lot of fun for me. I, I really enjoyed doing these tests, so I just did test after test after test in my bedroom. Now, what about even smaller particles? I just showed you the 2.5 micron particles, but what about the smaller 0.5 micron particles? Remember, this gets down to, to 0.5 microns. Here's a test with 0.5 microns. Again, you see the same pattern of that particular dropping over the course of the night. And again, test after test after test. Now, on average, it removed 84% of the small particles and 92% of the larger particles in the 15 meter squared room here in Beijing. My next question was, what if we use a stronger fan? This fan's pretty weak. What if we bump things up a notch? So I went on Taobao, and I got every single fan I could find, as long as it had a flat front. And after all the testing was done, there was one fan that stood out above the rest. It was this one right there. And I called it the cannon. <laughs> I called it the cannon for two reasons. One is I thought it sort of looked like a cannon, and the second is this thing kicked particulate butt. I mean, when I looked at the test results, it blew me away. So check this out. I mean, just straight down and low the entire night. My next question was, how does that compare to those expensive machines that I wanted to buy when I first set out? So I did tests in the same room with the same particle counter for the same length of time. And I got wealthier friends to lend me their expensive machines. I compared it to the three uh, biggest machines that were the biggest brands that were out in the market at the time. Now what I showed you before is 84% of the small particles, 92% of the large particles. Uh, the blue air that I tested did a bit better, 90 96%. Phillips, a bit better than that. IQ air, right in that same range. And the simple DIY cannon removed as much particulate as these expensive purifiers. Now, perhaps my favorite thing is to compare the effectiveness versus the price. So I'm just going to put the effectiveness back up there and overlay on top of it the price of these different machines. So you can see the value proposition quite clearly. But I think, obviously, the DIYs are outliers here. But even if you look at among the expensive brands, 
It is not true that the more money you pay guarantees you more clean air. Put another way, for the cost of one of those, R one of those uh, IQ errors, you can put 70 of these simple originals in your home. Or just for the cost of the replacement filters, you could still essentially fill your home with these simple originals. So what I did is I put all this information on a blog, all my tests, all my data for everybody to see, told people how to do this, I made a Chinese version as well. And next, I reached out to a group in Beijing called the Beijing Energy Network. Now, they said, that's fantastic, but why don't you do a workshop where instead of just telling people about this, you have people build them themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I said, that's great, but the problem is I, they weren't going to pay for it, so I had to buy 20 fans and 20 filters and 20 straps. And so my house was full of these, and I was just hoping that people would, would sign up, otherwise I now own 20 fans. Um, within an hour of sending out the email for, for the RSVP list, we had one spot left. And so we ended up doing three workshops. I ordered 60 fans. It was, it was fantastic to see how interested people were in protecting their health in Beijing. So after that, people started emailing me and saying, which, which type of fan should I buy? Um, I'm too lazy to do it. Can you do it for me? Or they say, which HEPA filter should I use? I don't know which, which HEPA filter to use. So at that point, I started a website called smarterfilters.com, where I would ship these to people, um, including HEPAs that we had tested personally. Now, um, I was going to talk about masks today. I'm just going to skip through the mask part right now. The, the main point that I want to talk about with masks is that they are effective. Um, here's me doing a fit test um, in Beijing. Um, but what you can see is that when you wear masks, they, there are several types that will get over 90% of particles in the air that you're breathing. And it, uh, again, with filters, the, there's essentially no relationship between what you're paying and what you're breathing, OK? So protecting yourself, even when you're outside of your home, is also something that does not have to cost you an arm and a leg. Two that I recommend, uh, on the cheaper side, this 4 rmb mask performed over 97% in these fit tests that I and Dr. St. Cyr did in Beijing. A slightly more expensive one that is a bit more, uh, scored a bit higher in the ratings, costs about 20 to 30 RMB. So again, you don't have to spend a, a, an arm and a leg to breathe clean air. So thank you for listening. Um, feel free to add us on WeChat. And